Hi everyone and welcome to Can't Cook with Jason. Today I'm going to show you how to make Chinese coconut cocktail buns or Gai Mei Bao. Using the Tanzong water roux technique, this makes a pillowy soft bun that remains soft for a few days after baking and it's filled with a decadent sweet butter coconut filling. The smell wafting through your kitchen when this is baking is sublime and almost as good as eating the buns themselves. To make the buns, we need 230 grams of strong bread flour, 3 grams of salt, 5 grams of milk powder, 35 grams of sugar, 4 grams of instant yeast, then mix to incorporate. Then add in 80 grams of tanzong, 35 grams of whisked egg and 80 milliliters of milk. Then mix on a medium low speed for 5 minutes or if you want a real workout then 10 minutes by hand. Once the dough is starting to come together, add 20 grams of butter to soften that room temperature and continue mixing for another 5 to 10 minutes. Whilst the dough is mixing, let's make that amazing coconut filling. Add 90 grams of butter, 40 grams of caster sugar and cream together using a spoon. Then add 30 grams of milk powder, 25 grams of cake flour, and then 45 grams of desiccated coconut and mix together until homogenized. Then wrap this in cling film so you can roll, massage, and maneuver the filling into a nice long sausage shape. Once you're happy, put this in the fridge to firm up for 10 minutes or so. After 15 to 20 minutes of mixing, let's check the dough. As with any bun or bread, I always do the window pane test. Grab a part of the dough and slowly stretch between your fingers. If it forms a thin membrane where you can see the light shining through without tearing, then it's done. Let's create a tight ball by gently folding the dough underneath and into itself with your fingertips. What you're trying to do here is form a tight skin across the top and trap air inside the ball. Using the friction from your work surface, which is why I didn't add any flour here, Twist the dough to close up the underside to seal in that air pocket we just created. Then transfer to a bowl and cover tightly to rest at room temperature for about an hour or until double in size. After an hour, you can see the dough has expanded and the inside is misty due to the gas from the fermentation process. The dough has a lovely smooth texture to it. Lightly flour your work surface and turn out the dough, which may be a little sticky now. I highly recommend buying one of these plastic bench scrapers they are invaluable for any dough work and are super cheap. Lightly flour in your hands, quickly stretch and maneuver the dough into a long thick roll and then using your bench scraper, divide equally into 8 segments. The weight varies but I normally get about 55 grams per segment. Now to form our little dough balls, grab a segment and lightly cover in flour and flatten into a disc. Using a finger, fold the edge into the middle systematically and then using two hands, stretch and press together before carefully pinching close the seam. What we're trying to do here is seal air into the ball for a good second proof. Then similar to before, use the friction from your work surface to tighten and roll the dough into a nice ball. Look at that, perfection. Once all eight are done, you can add them to a proofing box or just cover tightly in a roasting tray and proof for 10 to 15 minutes. Whilst that proves, let's make our topping. In a bowl, add 40 grams of butter, 20 grams of caster sugar and cream together. Then add 40 grams of cake flour and mix well until you have a smooth paste. After 15 minutes, the dough balls have expanded, but more importantly, they've rested, making them easy to roll out Retrieve the coconut butter filling and split into eight equal pieces and set aside. Lightly flour your work surface and your rolling pin and carefully roll the dough into an oval shape. 
being careful not to push out too much air. You can see the air bubbles as I roll this, so be gentle. You push out too much air and your bun won't be as soft and airy. Then grab a piece of filling and squish it between your fingers into a little sausage and place it in the middle of the dough. Then fold the dough over and pinch hard to close the seam. Then gently roll and shape this into a corn dog shape. Place seam side down on a baking sheet lined with baking paper and leave 2-3cm to three centimeter gap between each bun. If it's a cold day, a really neat trick is to put a pan of boiling water into your oven and then add in your buns, then close the door to make a proofing box. After 45 minutes, the bun should have really expanded in size. Add the topping into a piping bag and pipe two neat lines across each bun. I'm not going to lie, I'm more of a cook than a baker and my piping work is horrendous. Once you've managed to do a better job than me with your piping work, brush each bun with a whisked egg and then into a preheated oven at 180 degrees celsius for 12 to 15 minutes. Yes, this is what you want. You're aiming to have the buns grow into each other during the baking stage as this protects them from the heat. Optional, but you can add a sugar glaze on top. Simply mix one tablespoon of sugar with one tablespoon of water. Just look at that. Milky, pillowy softness as they peel apart. Look how light and airy it is. The texture is so soft and that tangs on. And look how it springs back. Let's cut one open to give you a peek of the cross section. Plenty of filling unlike the store bought version. The smell is just incredible. Okay, there we have it. Homemade, super soft Chinese coconut buns. Remember to subscribe, click the bell to be notified and post some comments and I'll catch you next week.